I know a lot of people think I should probably change the channel name from Thinking Critical to Thinking Cynical. That perhaps I've become a little bit too negative. I can't be satisfied with anything. And I will fully admit, I am very frustrated with modern comic books these days. But there have been a handful of very good comic books that have come out lately that I've been talking about on the channel. You know, some things I didn't really even know about but had creators I respected, like the Sacrificers from Rick Remender. Other characters that I absolutely know and love and had good concepts to them, but I was not fully bought in because of the creative teams. I needed to see something a little bit more, but it turns out Jim Zub on Conan the Barbarian. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Turns out Ben Percy still has a good story in him, or at least it appears that way early on in the Wolverine vs. Predator series. But there is one series that I... I couldn't even bring myself to be cynical about. I was like, there is no way that Daniel Warren Johnson on the Transformers can be anything less than absolutely magnificent. I can't imagine a Transformers fan, someone that's grown up with the characters and the lore and the history of the universe and all that, coming to this particular comic book and not being at the very minimum extremely satisfied. And I would say extremely satisfied would be on the low bar. I consider this like a perfect comic book. In fact, I'm giving it five out of five. This is the best comic book, individual comic book I've read in a couple of years. If you haven't noticed, I actually haven't rated any comic book five stars in, in a while. And this is exactly what I wanted. It's the perfect example of what I want from a Transformers comic book. And another example that if you actually hire people that like the characters, that like the universe, that like the medium of comic books, and maybe Daniel Warren Johnson doesn't like me as a person, or maybe he doesn't like you as a person. Maybe he thinks our online personas are a little bit too toxic, but it sure as hell feels like he respects me. He wants me to actually get my bang for my buck when I open the comic book, and this thing is just absolutely badass. It's amazing, and I got to get into it because there's so much good stuff to talk about. And if you're going to talk about a Daniel Warren Johnson comic book, you definitely have to talk about the art first. He has a very unique style, basically unlike anything else that you're going to see in modern comic books today. Really gained notice under Murder Falcon. I thought his Beta Ray Bill a couple of years ago at Marvel was absolutely fantastic. Last year, we got Do a Powerbomb, which I thought was the second best comic book released the entire year after Batman Superman World's Finest. And this year, he goes for Transformers. And I just love his style. Every time he gets a hero, when he wants to show them doing something cool, they absolutely look badass across the board, especially Optimus Prime. You can see that Danny Warren Johnson has more than a man crush on Optimus because Optimus Prime looks like a complete badass in multiple situations in this comic book. And you can just feel the frenetic energy flowing out of the pages of that comic book, especially on this page where you can see he's running. He's got these two humans in his arms. He's got his gun up. He's running away from explosion. Tell me that doesn't look fantastic. And that's one of like four or five images of Optimus that absolutely just, just are perfection when you think about who the character is. When he's describing who the characters are, who Optimus is, who Ratchet is, who Starscream is, he never really tells you through the dialogue. You don't get it through exposition. You don't hear Starscream going, stop that damn Optimus Prime. He thinks he's a hero. He's going to save everybody. You don't hear Optimus going, oh my goodness, Starscream, you're this massive murderer. You're this bad guy. You actually see it in the art. I would say 75 to 80% of the entire story being told in this comic book is actually portrayed in the art and not in the dialogue, which is something I absolutely love from this medium. I don't know if this is the best illustrated comic book that he's ever done in his life, but my goodness, if it's not, I'm having a hard time thinking about what actually could be better. This is just on another level. And I'm glad you can't see me because you would have noticed Geek Ejaculate all over this goddamn comic book because it's absolutely that good. I've had a comic book stiffy for three months straight once they announced this comic book, and I can't believe that it delivered this great. When we start out the comic book, we are introduced to the two young human characters. I'm not really going to get into that because I'm much more interested in the Transformers, but it's very well done, very well executed. Turns out there was a ship on Earth, absolutely enormous spaceship. Jetfire has arrived. He's discovered the ship and he's unearthed it. And when you go inside, there's just mayhem all over the place. All these pieces of Transformers and Decepticons like all over the ground or whatever. And all of a sudden, Starscream has come to life. He's like, good job, Jetfire. Thank you for saving us. Now I'm going to shoot Bumblebee right in the face. As I mentioned, almost every bit of character work done in this comic book is actually done by the art itself. And that's why it should be done in the comic book. And Starscream is absolutely diabolical. And Jetfire is completely beside himself. So he's like, what are you doing? You, you can't just be shooting people. At one point, Starscream points to the Transformers logo on one of their arms and says, that is the symbol of evil, and we have to wipe it all out. This is the best chance we'll ever get to kill all the Transformers. So you have stuff happening, 
And there's another robot called Teletron who's actually come to life using his Energon resources and is putting all the robots back together, but he's putting the Decepticons back together quicker and it's not gonna turn out well for the Autobots if somebody doesn't come around. Thankfully, our hero in waiting, Optimus Prime, is the first one to wake up. He realizes what Starscream has done. He just blasted a helpless bumblebee in the face. What kind of monster is this? And Ratchet wakes up kind of with him. They're like, hey, we need to save everybody. The Decepticons are about to be fully engaged, and they're going to be able to kill all of us. There's a trailer sitting next to them. They're like, we need to get everybody in there. And then Teletron has done something to me where I can become something else. Obviously, we know that he's going to become a big rig. And he's like, we need to get these guys to safety. And then Optimus absolutely goes fully Optimus Prime on Starscream's ass and gives him a German suplex. That was absolutely badass. If you're a wrestling fan, that is something you probably never thought you would see in your life. Optimus Prime, German suplexing, fucking Starscream. I thought it was amazing. If you were a newbie to Transformers and this is your first comic book, that moment right there, you know Optimus Prime is badass and he's an absolute fucking powerhouse. He pulled a Brock Lesnar on his ass. It was absolutely great. And of course, he discovers the humans. He's like, what are you doing here, tiny humans? And there aren't a ton of characters when it comes to Transformers and Decepticons that are animated in this comic book. You get Optimus Prime and you get Ratchet. You see Bumblebee getting shot in the face. You have Jetfire, who I'll get to here in a moment. Then you have Starscream. I believe Skywarp. I think he's the other Decepticon that can fly the fighter jet. And then finally, Soundwave showed up. Of all the Decepticons, he was absolutely my favorite Decepticon as a kid. He had the coolest design. He was basically a radio player, and he had a cassette that he could eject out of his chest that would turn into like this little cat thing and do a spying and all that kind of stuff. Definitely one of my favorite moments of this comic book. And there's just so much going on. And it's so awesome. And I think Daniel Warren Johnson did the right thing by not having so many Autobots and Decepticons that he had to give everybody a moment. He only really has five or six characters here that we all know and love. And it allows them all to do something really cool on the page. Obviously, the Daniel Warren Johnson art sells it all. And, and of course, the human, the kids there, they realize that Optimus Prime is the good guy because obviously he's the good guy. Anybody reading this knows Optimus Prime is the good guy and they try to help him out. And like I said, you get that awesome image of them trying to push the gun to Optimus's hand. And eventually Optimus does damage or perhaps uh, destroy Teletron. So the Decepticons can't get to full force and he's given the opportunity to take off run for it while he's got his buddies in the trailer. And there's a great moment when they actually transform into the big rig and the ambulance with Ratchet, obviously. It was really cool. It just looks so amazing. I can't, I can't get over how awesome this looks and how much Daniel Warren Johnson got what Transformers is. We haven't seen anything this cool in such a long time. And by the end, Jetfire actually stops Skywarp. So Starscream has to stop chasing down and hunting the Autobots in this one, and he kind of has to regroup. And at the end, Daniel Warren Johnson does allow Jetfire to give us a little bit of hints, a little bit of an idea of what's going on through some exposition. But for the most part, the major story beats are actually told in the art itself, which I thought was great. But he did let him know. He's like, hey, listen, I didn't know that you and Starscream were fighting. I didn't even realize you were the prime when I left a thousand years ago or whatever. This stuff wasn't happening. I thought I was saving everybody. This is all my fault. You know, I did the wrong thing. And we have this really uh, tender, crazy moment where Ratchet really can't help him out anymore, kind of laying the groundwork that something has happened. Obviously, it happened on Cybertron. And I imagine that's going to all be fleshed out over time. And I think Daniel Warren Johnson made a lot of really good choices. The best choice being just start out on Earth, get into it, tease a couple of things that happened in the past, and then fill in those blanks later. It's really best to take this opportunity to establish who Optimus Prime is, get people excited for the comic book, and also the new status quo for the Decepticons, which something has changed. Because when we go back to the Decepticons, and they're in like a mine or whatever, and there's a conversation going between Skywarp, Starscream, and Soundwave, one of them almost mentions Megatron's name, and Starscream absolutely loses his mind. He's like, you do not say that name. We do not speak his name clearly indicating that something happened along the way before they made it to Earth, you know, somewhere between the trip from Cybertron and the war there to them crash landing on Earth and all this stuff happening. Something happened to Megatron, and now Starscream is actually the leader of the Decepticons. So I'm actually very excited to see Megatron to return to this, but I also like Starscream. And you can almost hear the voices from the animated series from the 80s when these characters are talking. When Optimus Prime says a good line, I could hear that awesome booming voice. 
when Soundwave is talking, I can hear that like sniveling voice that he had. That was heavily synthesized. Same thing with Starscream. So it was really so well done. And also along the way, you know, he established who the characters are. He established what the fight is. The new playground, Earth, where they're going to do battle. These two human characters, which not completely important yet, but one of their fathers is in the mine that the Decepticons take over. So there is going to be something personal there, but also establishing that major stuff happened on Cybertron. The war between the Autobots and the Decepticons started, and then somewhere along the way, something happened to Megatron. So he planted the seeds for some really cool story elements that I'm really excited to find out what happened. And like I said, I just can't imagine anybody delivering an issue one better than this when it comes to a known commodity like Transformers. He literally gave everybody what they wanted, an awesome display of Autobots versus Decepticons, Optimus Prime, at his Optimus Prime best, but not giving you Megatron the very first issue, which I think was actually smart, showing that something has changed along the way. The status quo is a little bit different. And that sniveling weasel fucking Starscream is in charge. He just shot Bumblebee right in the face like a jerk hole. Can you believe that guy? What an absolute diabolical villain. And I just, uh, I had so much fun reading this comic book. And um, I think if you're a Transformers fan, you are going to love this comic book just as much as I do. If you're a Daniel Warren Johnson fan, I think you're going to love this comic book just as much as I do. And if you're neither a Transformers fan or a Daniel Warren Johnson fan specifically, but you love comic books, I think you'll be able to get into this without really knowing the characters. And I imagine most of you know a thing or two about Transformers. It's not like it's uh, not a billion dollar movie franchise or wasn't there under Michael Bay or whatever. But I don't think you need to have watched the cartoon to get into this. I don't think you need to have read the comic books before this to get into this. I don't think you needed to watch the Michael Bay movies to enjoy this. I think if you're a comic book fan, you can come to this, you'll understand who the characters are, you will be drawn in by the art itself, and the wonderful storytelling by Daniel Warren Johnson, and he, he just knocked it out of the park. This is a perfect comic book, in my opinion. I imagine some people are going to disagree with me, They're like, Wes, you give out one five-star every two years to a comic book, and you did it on Transformers number one? You're goddamn right I did, because this comic book exceeded all of my expectations, and my expectations were through the roof. This thing absolutely delivered, and, and I just loved it. I was thoroughly entertained. I had so much fun, and being a Transformers fan, I'm glad this comic book came out. I cannot sing its praises loud enough, and I hope all of you get to discover this as well, and there are a few things in there that I didn't let out of the bag, but I couldn't be more excited about this and what it pretends for the future of Transformers, hopefully G.I. Joe under Skybound with Josh Williamson will be able to do something half as good as this. If it does, I'll consider that a success based on what happened in IDW where it was just treated so poorly. They decided Transformers needed to be on the forefront of gender studies and gender identity and sexuality culture and all that kind of stuff and just really ruin the franchise. There's a reason Hasbro took that license away from IDW and I'm so happy Skybound and Image got it and Daniel Warren Johnson got a chance to write this comic book. This was so terrible. There's also a link in the video description.